We're with Peter Schweitzer. He is the uh, president of the Government Accountability Institute. He is also a guy who has written several books, uh, exposés on both the right and the left. The left now forgets that he does that, and they just call him a tool of the the right. Um, But he lets the chips fall where they may. Thus, uh, why he's also talking about people uh, in several books, like Mitch McConnell. Um, So, Peter, we're talking about, in your book, Blood Money, uh, how the Chinese Communist Party is sowing chaos in the United States. Is there, there, I mean, not, not that there needs to be, but do you have evidence of more things other than just the fentanyl? Oh, absolutely. Um, take the issue uh, of the trans movement in the United States. I mean, this just erupted in the last five years. Well, as I point out in the book, uh, two of the biggest funders of the trans movement in America are China-based billionaires. Uh, one is an American uh, Marxist named Roy Singham. Uh, he worked, uh, he built a company called ThoughtWorks. He was a consultant advisor to Huawei, a Chinese military-linked company. He sold his business, made him a billionaire to a private equity company partly owned by the Chinese government. He moved to Beijing. He's very close friends with people in the CCP. He gets invited to their events. He's put more than $160 million into radical causes in the United States, including the trans rights movement. The other Chinese billionaire doing that is a guy named Joe Tsai, who is the co-founder of Alibaba. Um, he has poured tens of millions of dollars into the trans rights movement. Um, and he, in addition, he owns the um, WNBA team in New York, the New York Liberty, uh, which was the first professional sports team to have a trans athlete play. Now, here's the, 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 the very troubling part for me, Glenn, about this is these guys do not push for these rights in China. They only push for these rights in the United States. Uh, there's no, you know, they're not trans. They don't have family members that are trans. Um, this is clearly an effort to, you know, destabilize the United States. If you look at a lot of the violent actions in the streets in 2020 with BLM or the violent actions in the streets now involving pro-Hamas demonstrators, there are a couple of groups, FRSO, PSL, that spearhead these really radical, violent protests. And as I lay out in the book, these are organizations that take their marching orders from China. In some cases, there are financial ties. They consult with Chinese officials. And I quote from Chinese government reports where they actually monitor and track the behavior of these organizations. Uh, And then the other part I would add is online. There's so much craziness online. The Chinese military, the PLA, uh, has thousands of uh, experts that run individually thousands of social media accounts where they pose as Americans in the United States. Basically half the accounts, Glenn, say America is a hopelessly racist, bigoted society. And the other half of the accounts say, I only like white people. And they're posing as Americans. I think we are actually less divided uh, than we believe we are. And China is trying to create fissures uh, between us. And they're very explicit that this is part of the disintegration warfare strategy that they've embraced. Where would you put this on the scale of PSYOP operations of the past from Soviet Union and everything else? How big is this? Oh, no, no comparison. I mean, look, the, the, the Russians lacked uh, sophistication when it came to this stuff. They lacked capacity. Uh, China uh, is very, very aggressive um, in their approach here. Um, and if you think about it, it's brilliant. It's basically saying we're going to beat the United States without actually fighting a war. And as we focus exclusively on, you know, how many battleships do we have or how many aircraft carriers do we have? What is the situation in Taiwan? Those are important issues. I'm not saying they aren't. But that is the exclusive focus in Washington. Nobody wants to focus on China's meddling uh, in the United States. I will tell you, I, I somewhat disagree uh, with you. We, that's, why our, that's why we're doing a Keller Revolution op, really, I think, on ourselves and all over the, uh, the world. We are doing that, but we are not doing it with China. We'll do it in Ukraine and everything else where we'll have these color revolutions and and use many of these tactics on our own people now, it has been shown. Yeah. But yeah. But China is approached as a friend in many ways. Yeah, no, exactly. I agree with you. Yes, there's no question the color revolutions that, 
you know, started in, in, in the Obama administration. Uh, the Chinese actually cite those uh, as examples of what to use. But, yeah, I mean, the problem is we don't have an awareness of this. And there are people on the political left that, that have some uh, affinity for Beijing that don't want to have this conversation. I have in the book, uh, for example, um, quotes from uh, there's a Chinese organization called the Center for the Study of Foreign Marxist uh, Parties, political parties. It reports directly to the Central Committee, the CCP. We got access to their analysis in the United States. Uh, and one of the points of analysis is that, yes, the Communist Party USA is, is disorganized, it's small, and it's irrelevant. Uh, but they, they talk favorably about the role of people like AOC and Bernie Sanders. And they say, while these are not perfect vehicles, they are still very helpful vehicles in advancing the agenda that they have in the United States. So, you know, the political left doesn't want to talk about it because these are their champions. Uh, and yet there it is in black and white, uh, uh, according to the Chinese point of view. Talking to Peter Schweizer, the book is Blood Money and it's out tomorrow. You need to get a copy of it. Uh, Peter, can you talk about the how much of this stuff that China's trying to do would be ineffective if we had a secure border? And is this one of the reasons why we continually treat the border with such little significance in the federal government? Yeah, no, I mean, that's a great point. I mean, there's obviously the, the, the issue of uh, illegal immigrants coming, uh, uh, particularly from China. Uh, it also involves certainly with fentanyl. But there's another problem uh, it, it's, I talk about in the book. Part of the Chinese strategy is to sow violence in American streets. China has a history of selling machine guns to radical groups and um, criminal organizations in the United States going back to the 1990s. They do it today in a very clever way with a small device called a Glock switch. It's a small switch that you put on a Glock handgun. It converts a Glock handgun to a fully automatic machine gun. Uh, it's obviously highly illegal in the United States, highly uh, illegal in China. In China, you can't even own a firearm. And yet the Chinese are openly marketing them and smuggling them into the United States uh, and selling them to criminal gangs in this country. Uh, it's a massive widespread problem. The rate of machine gun fire on American streets has escalated. And Customs and Border Protection first identified this in 2018. They finally have started to detect these things as they arrive in the mail. So what are the Chinese now doing? They're now going south of the border. They're setting up machine tool operations with the cartels, and they're starting to smuggle these devices across the open border. So it's illegal immigrants. It's fentanyl. It's now these devices. They're going to sow chaos in American streets because these devices are being targeted specifically at drug organizations and violent criminal organizations in the United States. So, Peter, you at some point in the book, Blood Money, you say – um, the CCP tricked the Trump administration into COVID lockdowns. Yeah. What do you mean by that? What evidence do you have of that? Well, uh, a couple of things. Um, one, if you remember back in March of 2020, uh, there was a report issued by Imperial College of London uh, by a Professor Ferguson, and it presented this apocalyptic view that if we did not imitate the Chinese and have lockdowns, there were going to be 2 million American dead within the next six months, and there are going to be 500,000 dead in the UK. And if you look at the accounts, um, uh, the memoirs that have come out, this had a very profound effect on Donald Trump um, and the administration. And this moved us to the point of saying, maybe we need to start looking at some of these things. And in fact, we did. Here's the problem. That Imperial College of London study was done uh, under Chinese influence. Uh, Imperial College of London is a leading academic partner uh, of the CCP uh, government in China. Um, they have a long cooperation there. That particular study uh, included Chinese data. It in included Chinese scholars. Uh, and then the Chinese, and, and again, I quote extensively from them, had a strategy to impose the authoritarian model for responding to disease on us. Because and you've talked about this, Glenn, before this point, the response was always people that are sick should stay home. Everybody else should go about their lives ordinarily. That's not the Chinese model. The Chinese actively push that in the United States. So one of the things they do, as I report in Blood Money, is they donated, I'll put that in quotation marks, drones 
to uh, American cities, uh, particularly in California and New Jersey, hundreds of drones that local governments, our own governments, started using to monitor their own people to make sure they were adhering to lockdowns. And this was part of a Chinese strategy to get us to embrace some of these authoritarian uh, uh, approaches. Um, and it's really quite extraordinary. And, and you know, one of the reasons um, uh, that we have a certain um, <laughs> uh, individual on the front cover of the book, uh, Tony Fauci, uh, is because we reveal in emails that we obtained, et cetera, that he covered for the Chinese in this regard, um, that uh, he would not criticize the Chinese. It's not just about the lab leak. He would not criticize the Chinese. He embraced their uh, lockdown approaches, and he kind of poo-pooed and criticized uh, uh, Americans. There's a famous exchange where a New York Times reporter is emailing with Tony Fauci and says China has been heroic in their response to um, this crisis with COVID, unlike, you know, Americans who are basically being fat, selfish slobs. And Tony Fauci's wow. response was, yeah, you make, you make a really, really great point here. I mean, in other words, he agreed with him. Um, so that's the disdain that a lot of these leaders had um, for their own countrymen and the embrace that they had for this authoritarian model uh, that the CCP imposed. So I'm out of time. Peter, will you come back in a couple of days when you, when you can come up for a breath of air and tell us where we need to start to dismantle? I mean, I, again, I thank you for exposing all of this. You're usually so far ahead of the curve, but I think America senses now something is really wrong, um, especially with our relationship with China and the border and fentanyl. So you're right on the money here. Um, I'd love to have you back to talk a little bit more about where we should begin to dismantle and how that can be done. Yep, we'd love to do it. As always, Glenn, I appreciate uh, your, your encouragement and support as always, and I'm glad to come back. Got it. Thank you so much, Peter. Peter Swiser, he is uh, an unbelievable, an unbelievable author, good friend of the program, known him for years. He never, never holds back any punches from either side. He is as fair as they come and extraordinarily uh, well buttoned up. His book, the latest, you should get it, comes out tomorrow, is Blood Money, Blood Money by Peter Swiser.